Hi folks, so Debian 11 has been released and uh, I thought that might be a good opportunity for me to talk and reflect a little actually on Debian 10. It is the distribution that I run on my personal laptop and I also run Linux Mint Debian Edition 4 on my desktop here which is based on Debian 10. Now I'm pretty bad at remembering Linux distributions code names but I believe Debian 11 is codenamed Bullseye, Debian 10 is codenamed Buster. So I'm going to just here on in be referring to them by their numbers. Uh, same thing goes for Ubuntu as well. In fact I think Ubuntu is worse because they come up with like obscure like um, uh, animal name patterns and 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 to be honest it's just easier like their their actual like version numbering is just the date it was released so not only is it sequential but it also provides a bit of useful information there anyway so anyway uh, that aside I'm going to talk a little bit about my time with Debian 10 uh, and and my experiences with it and and the the good times bad times and everything in between although in all honesty there isn't actually that much to report which you might say is is quite good when it comes to a distribution like a distribution should just help you know like facilitate it should be a good platform from w from where you can launch the rest of your applications and all that kind of thing and as far as debian uh 10 is concerned it has done that tremendously well so there we go. Uh, you can finish the video now. I'm not, you know, that that's that's that is literally it in a nutshell. There's a few things, a uh, few issues here and there that I've had with it, but they've all been minor. Like there's a reason why Debian 10 has stayed on this machine for as long as it has. Uh, so you know, I, I originally like gave myself free license just to put something a little bit more what you might call modern onto it because this is a multimedia machine. I game on it. I do video production on it. So you would think that Debian might be a little bit more conservative in that regard when it comes to uh the type of uh, software in the repositories and and its approach to to software in, in general and many people will say that debian's more suited to the server i run debian on the server hex runs debian on the server and drew runs debian on the server all three trendy talk people uh hosts or talent i guess i don't know maybe no mm, talentless <laughs> uh we're all um we're all running debian on the server end of things and we've all had a great time doing doing it i started off with ubuntu but then i kind of realized that debian is a little bit more true to the free software principles and philosophies and and it really on a server doesn't it's it's very similar to ubuntu at the end of the day so um you know with ubuntu you know they contribute a lot to debian but also um they um like a lot of their usp on the server side of things a lot of their their strength on the server side of things is like this whole wealth of uh, support that they they offer for enterprise level solutions of which i am not using so debian as a bit more of a community centric distribution uh, is a bit more suitable for me as an individual if i was running a big you know uh, several hundred or thousand person strong company then an, an ubuntu corporate solution might be something that i'd look to but fundamentally um, as someone who is is running a server and running desktop machines as a way to express my um enthusiasm for free software principles then debian is definitely much close to that and i think free software principles print free software principles are actually quite a important reason as to why i choose the distributions that i choose to run that's not necessarily to say that it has to be as free as possible otherwise i'd be running something like gnusance or pure os or triscal um, which are what you might call the fsf approved linux distributions uh, i just run i run debian i think debian adheres perfectly well to the free software principles uh, and it also does come with a unofficial uh, non-free version which includes a few extra wireless drivers and bits and pieces here and there which might run on machines that would otherwise be unable to run debian in fact why wi-fi drivers uh for me are like any laptop i seem to come across will have wi-fi wi-fi that requires proprietary drivers so I almost always pick up the unofficial non-free version of Debian almost out of habit now and I maybe you know like that's you know not the best way to approach it but um but the the non-free version of Debian is is actually really really good uh so there's that um but yeah and Linux Mint Debian edition is also really good uh if you want if you're looking for like a more polished version of Debian but it is just fundamentally Debian there are a few things that I um that I did have some issues with but i did find ways around them now uh, i meant to say this a little bit earlier on in the video i'm not going to be showing any screencasts or anything like that this is just going to be a bit of a chatty rambly video simply because 
on the uh, the actual like Debian Debian that I was running on my laptop, it just had vanilla GNOME on it. And to be honest, like I I don't think I really like GNOME as a desktop. All things considered, I've I've spent several months with it. You can get used to it and you can tolerate it, but the fact that there are a number of things that are so rigidly in place that you, you know, it feels a little bit apple-esque in that regard um i think that there is probably a section of users out there that would benefit from the rigidity of gnome's user interface but at the end of the day i just like xfce i like something a bit traditional uh, on this machine here with linux mint debian edition 4 uh, it does have the cinnamon desktop and the cinnamon desktop's lovely like it is a very modern if i was to to bring someone over to linux um or as i have done actually i do put them on linux mint cinnamon edition and they always are fine with it um it's, I have on occasion brought non-technical users over to a Linux Mint XFCE edition uh, with with basically the same level of success, but um, XFCE is a little bit more basic. It doesn't quite have the same level of, level of features, and it is a little bit like Linuxy, Unixy. It kind of does have that very much. Um, you can absolutely customize every micro pixel of it um, and most of your non-technical users are not interested in that um, cinnamon is just a great sort of intuitive uh, ui for for someone to you know launch applications from because that's really what a desktop environment kind of does at the end of the day so yeah cinnamon really good dis um, desktop environment as well uh, i've had zero issues with it on linux mint debian edition 4 and um all the underlying stuff is great so linux mint debian edition 4 has the same repositories as debian it's just a layer of polish on on top of that so uh, i do consider it debian with a little bit of linux mint polish on it to be honest um and i have in the past advocated that linux mint actually takes on debian as its um primary uh, distribution but linux mint have always said on the record that they look at the linux mint debian edition as a backup in case uh ubuntu does something that linux mint feels that they can't work with now some time ago um ubuntu actually started um embedding snaps a lot more deeper into their distribution to the point where if someone wanted to install the uh chromium browser by going um, apt install chromium uh, that it would pu pull down a snap package rather than actually install it from the repository and that was a line that the linux mint team felt had crossed and now have they've kind of put like um i don't know like i say they've blocked snaps from being installed but they've made it so that snaps cannot be sort of installed without actually having to um take an active step to activate them uh, which i think is probably a good move because snaps are an ubuntu canonical project they are a commercial project they're not open source and they're not decentralized and whereas i think that the existence of snaps and the snap repository can be a good thing especially in in like corporate environments and uh, situations where you want something that is basically foolproof to deploy and as a way to uh, build a software store that is a bit more friendly to proprietary software because you know most of us out there are really gonna we're gonna use some proprietary software some here and there um i mean i, I use steam for example uh, and i also use itch now itch is open source on the front end but i i'm pretty sure on the back end they they haven't released really i could be wrong on that one but like yeah so, you know, snaps are a bit like that. Like, everything on the front end, everything that's onto your system regarding snaps, I believe is open source, but it's just the back end that is is not. So it fundamentally is an app store. Um, and that's fine. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that snaps shouldn't exist, but when they start embedding themselves deeply into your system without you necessarily knowing it or willingly consenting to it, uh, I think that does cross a line there. Uh, and I think it is an issue of, of consent in that regard. Um, and it does seem that Ubuntu are leaning more and more into snaps, but Ubuntu have, all, have backed away from like almost every project or a canonical of back. You know, they seem to have backed away from almost every project. They're worse than Google for it. You know, there's like like a Ubuntu One, Unity Desktop, uh, Convergence, Mobile, all that kind of stuff. Like they, you know, they've they've tried and backed away from a, from a lot of stuff um so you know i don't know how, you know like i don't know how long snaps are going to be around here um that being said though um the linux mint debian edition does support flat packs out of the box and integrated into the linux mint software center so what i fundamentally have here is a incredibly rock solid debian base and if i need new pieces of software i can install them with, with, with flat packs and it's pretty flawless in that regard 
pretty flawless. So for the few pieces of software that I want to be as up to date as possible, uh, OBS being one of them, uh, then yeah, I'll use the flat pack. But for everything else, the, the software that was available a couple of years ago is just as good as the software available today, like in terms of features. It's feature complete. It's good enough. It does the job. It doesn't risk breaking and it's low maintenance. That's all I could really ask for. Yeah, when I, you know, get around to upgrading to um, Debian 11, there'll be some new versions of packages, but I expect my workflow will remain largely the same. Uh, it's an incredibly low maintenance and stable distribution, and I couldn't be more grateful that it exists. Uh, I like Arch and Arch-based distributions, and I think that they definitely have a place within the community as well. Um, but they are for people that are willing to fix problems when they arrive, um, or when they arise, rather. Uh, whereas Debian Stable, you know, it's a bit of a, once you set it up, you're good to go. You, you're, you you know, set it and forget it, as they say. Uh, and that's absolutely the case. Like, the fact that it's so low maintenance is basically the reason it stayed around on my systems as long as it has. I thought, well, you know what? You know, maybe at some point I might get a bit um, curious as to what some of the newer software is like. But mm, any task that I've had to do that was put in front of me, I just did with, with Debian. And it's great. Like, it just does the job. Might, might not be with the latest and greatest pieces of software, but it does the job, like it works well. And I think, you know, maybe 10 years ago when I was super into to the technical stuff of Linux um, and stuff was a bit more exciting, it felt a bit more exciting um, than, yeah, like, uh, you know, Arch would have been more, more up my street. But now I'm a little bit older. I've seen a lot of stuff and I've, I've enjoyed playing around with a lot of stuff. But now I kind of just want a computer that gets up and works. Uh, Debian actually kind of, suits that that mindset um at this point in time it was actually brought uh brought to my attention by some feedback i had through email um that like it's been so long since i last used windows i really don't know how what it's like to live with anymore i know a few people that have windows on machines uh, most people i know actually do, do run linux and mac i think there are a few people that run uh windows that i know um, but it always seems that Windows just gets gummed up with just random stuff that gets downloaded uh, over a period of time. It just seems inevitable. Everyone I know who's got a Windows PC, just it slows. I don't like the Mac UI, so to me, Linux does everything that I want it to do. It looks the way that I want it to look. Uh, to me, Linux is, is my experience with desktop computers now. Um, and it's kind of interesting because like, I struggle on, on uh, machines that are not, are not Windows or Mac. Like, it, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a noob in that regard. Linux machines to me is are, are as intuitive and straightforward as what your you know what your your average techie might think Windows is. Um, it's like uh, you know so someone was was talking to Mastodon the other day like wh why not just use Windows for gaming? Um, and and you know that's like a solid point because you know if you're just going to install Linux but then you just every piece of software you're going to install on top of it is going to be proprietary. You know unless you know like is there really that much point? Um, you know, like I like Linux because of its free software principles, but, um, and I think to be honest, all things considered, there probably are some technical merits for, for it playing games. For me, I know Linux. I know how to play games on Linux. All the games I like pl run on Linux, either through Proton or natively. Um, it ticks all the boxes. But now, of course, uh, I'm enjoying um, free software gaming a lot more, open source gaming, as you've probably noticed by some of the stuff that's coming up on this channel. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and to me, that's like recapturing like old Linux gaming, where like a game used to drop for Linux and everyone used to be like, pick it up and play it. These be people that weren't interested in first person shooters would pick up Borderlands 2 and that came up for Linux. And it was a bit of a moment. It was a bit of a coming together of, a, of the community. And I kind of miss that in a way now that we've just got all the games that we can play. If you, you know, you can play Google Stadia, you can play GeForce Now, you can play Proton. Um, I think Hex has some kind of Microsoft Xbox X Cloud kind of thing as well. Uh, who knows what Amazon are going to throw out? Uh, at the end of the day, there's just too much stuff for me. You know, there's too many games, there's too many platforms. And I think I've gone, you know, regressed a little bit back into the free software gaming world because it's like, oh, when, when something happens, like it does feel like there's a community around it that, that enjoy it. They enjoy these little moments. Like the community is small enough that, and, and, and big things don't happen every day in it. So it, it does feel like a lot more human than you know, AAA titles, which now, to me, seem to, to feel like Hollywood films. Oh, a new, you know, Grand Theft Auto game drops and it, it plays on Linux, great. Or a new whatever, you know, big a big game drops and, and you know, you can play on Linux. You can play Fortnite on Linux now. Yeah, you have to do it through GeForce now, but, like, you can. 
Um, so, in all honesty, like there are going to be a few AAA titles that you can't play on Linux. I'm not a AAA gamer, so it really doesn't bother me. And if you're not a AAA gamer, you could probably do everything on Linux that you'd want to do on 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 Windows. I think the only the only distinction really is anti cheat. And Valve seem pretty confident that they're going to get that sorted by the time the Steam Deck gets released. So, um, but yeah, all things considered, uh, I've been having a great time with Debian uh, Debian Ten. Um, at some point, I will probably upgrade to something, whether or not it be Debian or, you know, something. Maybe I might just give Linux Mint a run on here. Because to me, Linux Mint is, is like, it's taken Ubuntu, a very technically brilliant distribution, and it sort of decorporatized it a little bit, brought it back into the community, almost done what LibreWolf has done to Firefox. You know, it's, it's done that kind of thing. Um, and I like that. You know, it's, it's sort of like, it's, it's two philosophical approaches. You've got Debian that have built from the foundations something really quite remarkable and then you've got linux mint which have taken something that exists in a um in a from a place where from a from, i don't want to say like a, a philosophically cro compromised place but they've taken something from the corporate world and decorporatized it and i think that's you know from a philosophical point of view from a philosophical point of view something that i can relate to a little bit more i like the idea of the linux mint philosophy i like the, the like the linux mint community as well like the linux mint community is a very warm and and and, and welcoming community for, for newcomers to linux or non-technical users to linux um and i actually uh, i want to take a note to point out actually how lovely the debian community is now when i run debian um there uh, and and the the few times i've i've really spoken with debian people um there is like an assumed level of knowledge like if you're running debian it's almost assumed that you know a certain amount about linux yeah in the few times that i have spoken to people from from the debian community they've always been absolutely wonderful um i suppose it's kind of interesting in so far that like if people sort of notice that you're you're running debian it's almost sort of like there is some like assumed knowledge that you know you know you know a little bit more about distributions you know a little bit more about linux and the free software philosophy whereas with linux mint you can get people that are straight in day one on linux whereas i don't imagine there are probably many people that's that that spend their first day on linux using debian i mean i could be wrong on that one but um i would say debian is a little bit more of a an ad intermediate to advanced distribution to use when it comes to linux uh, whereas linux mint has is a great sort of stepping on point for, for users to Linux. And it was actually the first Linux Mint was the first distribution that made me actually feel genuinely at home on Linux. I tried Fedora before, I tried Ubuntu before, and these were earlier days now when both of those distributions were not quite as polished. And even SUSE as well. But I never felt that like Linux was going to be the true drop in for Windows until I came across Linux Mint, one of the earlier versions of Linux Mint. And they seem to just like understand that the mindset of someone coming from another distribution so uh yeah like uh, there's always going to be a special like place in my heart for linux mint because i there's a good chance that i would not be the linux user i am today if it wasn't for linux mint so so you know great i you know i've always felt them to be to be very like welcoming in terms of like their design philosophy as well as their community as well but uh, but yeah um so yeah like linux mint debian edition you've got all the benefits of debian but also like you've got a version of debian that you can introduce to someone who's who's less technical i think that's great um so anyway the the there were only two issues i had with with debian and they weren't really debian's fault um but they were things that i had to work around the first is that after a while app images um they stopped running and the reason they stopped running is because there became a point where app images were expected to run in a sandbox by default and uh the, the, then it, you needed to run the app image without the sandbox or something to that effect. i can't remember the exact problem now actually off the top of my head but it was like yeah you had to run you had to type in the name of the app image and then you had to do no sandbox or something like that so there was some sort of like some of the um, newer app images were didn't work on um uh, on debian without having to remove the sandbox and um, and i think there were a couple that were just too new for debian uh, anyway and th this was towards the end of of, of debian pens um you know or, or you know this was this was after a while of, of, of being around on, on debian 10 so 
Uh, yeah, app images started to get a bit like touch and go in terms of whether they work. Some of them, some app images like the Caden Live app image, the Libra Wolf app image, uh, I think KeyPass uh, app image, all these kind of, you know, like some of them would just work regardless. But there are also some app images that um, that sort of seem to not, not work on, on Debian. Uh, whereas they would do on, on an Ubuntu based distribution. So but to be honest, in every single case where an app image wouldn't work, there was a flat pack to replace it. So that's how I worked around it. And it worked out pretty fine. Pretty pretty painless, all things considered. Um also the other issue I had was my printer drivers just weren't working on Debian. Uh I have a rather old HP printer and I have to download HP LIP, the tools, the HP tools for um uh, for printers and it, I think it had something to do with how the permissions work in Debian versus how the permissions work in Ubuntu it looked it felt like the HP LIP uh, was packaged for Ubuntu brought over to Debian and it didn't quite sort of work uh, properly with Debian for some reason or another so um, yeah I, I ended up just sort of using an Ubuntu based machine to uh, to to print whenever I, in the rare occasions i needed to print oh, i hate printing on linux i hate printing on linux all things considered right as you know as critical as i i can be of ubuntu from time to time they nail printing like printing does seem to work on ubuntu so much better than any other linux distribution including arch including uh debian including fedora it's just like h you know and maybe I've got a printer that just doesn't play nice with Linux. I have yet to find a printer that does play nice with Linux. I hate printing on Linux with a vengeance. A lot of the time, I will just pay someone to print something out for me. Like there is a like a secretarial services business in town, and I'll just pay them the five pe five pence a sheet or whatever it is to to print out for me. Like it's fine, absolutely fine. Um, so those are my two issues: app images and printing. Um, the printing being, I want to say more serious, but like, I don't know if you can notice, I've got a little machine up here, which is a little netbook type thing. Um, I could just put an Ubuntu based distribution on that. And whenever I need to print, I'll just, I'll do that. You know, I could just use that, have, have a little, you know, netbook by a printer. And, and that might just be the way that I do it. And, you know, it, it could even be like you know, a windows machine for all it's worth, right? If it's all it's going to do is print, then, you know, mm. Um, but I'm not I'm not shelling out for a Windows license for for the sake of a printer. It would cost more than my printer. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. There's I mean, there's workarounds for all of these kind of th kinds of things. It would be nice if you didn't have to do it, but I'd rather work around than just not have something work uh, at all. So, hmm. but yeah. Other than that, can't complain about Debian. Never had a problem updating. Never had a problem with with anything great um, uh, amount of software in the repositories as well i'm actually quite surprised that their repositories are really quite extensive so that's pretty cool as well uh yeah debian takes pretty much every single box that i that i i need out of it and um and well done well done indeed so yeah um couldn't be more thrilled with it a successful distribution and here's to debian 11 um i hope it's every bit as good as its predecessors were and i'm sure it will be so, you know, uh, thank you to the Debian team for another fantastic distribution, I'm sure. Uh, thank you for Debian 10, of course, um, a wonderful distribution that not only I've had a great deal of um, en enjoyment and fulfillment out of, um, but also has acted as the base for a number of other distributions, which I believe are actually quite good. Uh, I, am I right in possibly thinking that MX Linux also runs on, uh, on Debian as well? And I tr when I tried MX Linux, that was really good as well. Um, interestingly enough, actually, MX Linux seemed to, to work, actually might be, yeah, it's, it's like maybe a distribution that I think worked with my printer. Why Debian, uh, why Debian didn't and MX Linux did, I'm not entirely sure, but MX Linux is really good, actually. It, there was, I think it was like last year or maybe the year before, like it was really quite popular among, in some circles, but yeah, MX Linux, really quite like it. Um, so anyway, uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, just a bit of a ramble on, on Debian, uh, to be honest. I wanted to do uh, some more thoughts on, on Linux distros on this channel for, for, you know, here and there because I've got them. Um, but yeah, great time with Debian. Um, I will probably drift over to something else at some point, but it's definitely like success and I'm definitely keeping it on the server. Rock solid on the server. It's wonderful. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.